I love you, and I think our marriage can get better over time. Aww. People sometimes think marriages go worse over time, but I think that marriages can also get better over time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was an awkward because you asked. I know. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So welcome to Miss Reche YouTube channel. And to start with the lady, tell us your name, where you born, and where you are now. Um, hi, I'm Selina Nkoile. I'm from, um, I'm originally from Kajado West, a village called Mosuro, but now I live in Naro County. Okay. At Bomanoma. Okay. My name is Brian, originally from the United States. Grew up in Connecticut, graduated from the University of Colorado. Moved to Kenya 10 years ago. That is 2013. 2013. Yes. And then lived in Kisi for three years, lived in Migori for three years. Mm -hmm. And then in 2019 came here with my wife yes. and built Bomanoma. Okay. Amazing. How was it growing up for you, Brian? Growing up in, in Connecticut? In, yeah. I was, it was amazing. I had a great childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, How many siblings? I have one younger brother who lives in California. Okay. Your relationship with your parents? Very good. Uh -huh. Very good. They came out here last year to see uh, our daughter, their first grandchild. Uh -huh. They were very happy. Uh -huh. um, which school? High school. High school? High school. Ridgefield High School. I come from a town called Ridgefield uh -huh. in the state of Connecticut. So I went to Ridgefield High School uh -huh. and then graduated from the University of Colorado. In 2013. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you, Serena? How was it growing up for you? Yeah, I grew up uh, a pastoralist child mm -hmm. from the Maasai community. I don't think there's any other fun childhood other than the Maasai mm -hmm. <laughs> childhood. Tell us about it. Yeah, uh, going out to graze animals, living in a communal way of life. You say there's no more fun childhood kuliko kuchunga kuchunga ngombe. Ndio. Tulijibamba sana. It was good. It was good. And then um, I went to Naningoi Girls Boarding Primary School in Mosiro. Mm -hmm. And then I also went on and did a few short courses. I did a permaculture design course. Oh, I went to Nomatasiani Girls High School in Gong mm -hmm. for my high school, yeah. all levels. Yeah. And then I did uh, trainings and uh, courses, short courses, mm -hmm. but the major ones are um, advocacy mm -hmm. and community em empowerment. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm an activist myself oh. and I campaign for girls' education. Mm -hmm. And why? then, why? Because education was my saving grace too. Like, I wouldn't be where I am if it were not for education. Okay. And then I did a, a diploma, a cultural tourism diploma in the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just about to complete um, a degree in project planning and management from the University of Nairobi still. Mm -hmm. I also have a permaculture design course certification. So I'm a consultant of regenerative agriculture mm -hmm. and organic farming and sustainable mm -hmm. agriculture. Yeah. How many siblings do you have? I have so many siblings. So I have, um, I have uh, four siblings who are my blood brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. but I have six adopted siblings, mm -hmm. not seven adopted siblings that Pause. we take care of. How many siblings do you have that are your blood brothers and sisters? We are four of us. But how many siblings do you have? Two. No, no, mm -hmm. no, try for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> how many siblings, siblings do you have? Nadu Patrick. And and my does my elder brother count? Okay, yes. Yeah, yes. yes. So we you have, have four of us. But you have how many siblings? Three. Three. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. And how was it like your relationship with your parents growing up? It was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They are still alive. My mom passed away. Oh. Okay. Years ago. Yeah. Hi. Brian, when and how did you move to Kenya? The first time I came to Kenya was 2012, mm -hmm. in between my junior and senior year at the University of Colorado. Mm -hmm. I actually came to climb Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, but I decided if the two biggest costs were flights and vaccinations, basically, why not 
explore a little bit. Why would I pay all that money to go climb a mountain for seven days and then fly back? Mm -hmm. So I came to Kenya and volunteered, and that's when I got introduced to the life of street children. Mm -hmm. So I, <clears throat> I went back to America to finish my final year mm -hmm. uh, at the University of Colorado, knowing that I wanted to, to come back to Kenya. So I started a nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. a 501c3 nonprofit organization in America that partners with CBO's uh, community-based organizations in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And once I graduated in 2013, I moved back to Kenya mm -hmm. and helped street kids, built schools, mm -hmm. built orphanages uh, in, in Kisi and Migori for six, seven years before moving here. So you were living in Kisi? I was living in Kisi, a uh -huh. place called Keumbu. Mm -hmm. And then I was living in uh, Migori County, a town called Uriri. Okay. For three years, three years, three years. Mm -hmm. So coming to Kenya for the first time, what was your expectations? Hmm, good question. I had no expectations. Mm -hmm. I had no expectations, but I loved it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to stay in Nairobi. I didn't come to Kenya to hang out in a, in a big city. I wanted to get out as far away as I yeah. could, and I, I went to Kisi. Mm -hmm a small village right outside Kissy. Yeah. And I, I loved it. I loved the the people, the the lifestyle, the food. Mm -hmm. You know, we're outside all day. I, I, yeah. Your yeah. So I knew I wanted to come back. Your favorite food then? In Kissy? <laughs> yeah. Matoke. Matoke. Yeah. <laughs> Matoke. What shocked you? The life of street kids. Mm -hmm. That there are kids who are five or six or ten years old huffing toxic glue and living in the street and picking through dumpsters. Mm -hmm. So I went back and started a nonprofit to help those kids, knowing that I would come back to Kenya. Mm -hmm. And we built two orphanages. Mm -hmm. Where did you build it? Yeah, one in Kisi, one in Migori. Mm -hmm. And uh, took a lot of kids off the street. Mm -hmm. And they're in school, they've graduated. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then we came here and, and built Bomonoma. Okay. Is the orphanage still? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was the challenge of building the orphanage in Kenya, considering you're your foreigner? Hmm. The biggest challenge wasn't having anything to do with Kenya, it was fundraising. Because mm -hmm. there's so many nonprofits, fundraising is very competitive. Even though if, if someone doesn't have a nonprofit or is not in the nonprofit world, they might not realize it. But a nonprofit is, is you have to run it like a business. Yeah. And uh, fundraising is not unlimited. And all nonprofits are fighting for the same amount of funding or yeah. from the same people. Uh -huh. So it's very competitive to get funding for you know applying for grants, mm -hmm. local fundraisers, that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. So fundraising was always a challenge. Okay. But working in Kenya was, was never a problem because we partner with local Kenyan nonprofit organizations. Okay. So even though we did everything together, our organization was more of the 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 supervising fundraising organization. Mm -hmm. We host volunteers who help and build, but the the, pro, the 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 local partner organization who we partner with are the implementing organization. And we always knew that we couldn't stay there forever. So after a certain time. There's not much more to build. We, you know, you build a school, you build an orphanage, you build dormitories, you build a library, you build an IT center, you build all these things, and then you know the amount of land that the organization has runs out. Mm -hmm. So we knew we had to have an exit strategy. So all the 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 infrastructure, whether it be buildings or whether it be more sustainable infrastructure, or profit generating in infrastructure like uh, solar power or a fish farm, mm -hmm. a fish pond, sorry, mm -hmm. or anything like that, it stayed with uh, the partner Kenyan nonprofit organization and if they're able to manage it correctly then they can grow and in both cases both of our projects have grown exponentially since we handed everything over to them, the management, the supervision, oh. everything. It's gotten bigger and bigger. So it's now under Kenyan management? Exactly, oh, exactly. Amazing. Exactly. And weather, did it favor you? Say it again? The weather. How was weather then? The weather. Okay, so it's favored you. I mean, I grew up in a place that had winter mm -hmm. and snow and ice. Mm -hmm. So the weather is perfect oh. all year round. <laughs> <laughs> it's never, it's never too cold. Mm -hmm. so, so tell me, how was it adapting in the in the village in Kisi? Like it was easy. Community. It was easy. I'm, I've always been someone who likes to be outside, mm -hmm. likes to go on adventures, so, and I'm able to adapt quite easily. So it was uh, not a problem. Mm -hmm. It was not a problem. Ever experienced like bullying or racism then? I experienced racism, I experienced racism then. Mm -hmm. I experienced racism, racism every day. Oh. Every day. How is it? Tell us about it. It's not the same type. I, I can't compare it to racism of other races or other places like African Americans in America or something like that. 
But the racism I face is people treat me differently because of my skin color, which is racism. Mm -hmm. It's something simple as, as charging me, trying to charge me, uh, four times as much for something that a local Kenyan would get for... Zungu price. Yes, <laughs> yeah, a quarter of the price. Mm -hmm. So I can't compare the racism to other people's racism, but it's certainly experienced by all um, minorities in any culture, including white people in Kenya. Yeah. And before I ask both of you how you people met, I would love to know, Selena, what were you doing in 2013 when um, Brian was doing mission? I was a In 2013, I think in 2013, by that time I was already, I had already graduated high school. Yes. So I was also working so hard to make ends meet because of course, for me, I'm from a different community, which actually uh, sometimes does not value, especially girls' education, that much. Okay. So I was really struggling to like uh, explain to my parents the need for me to transition to a higher institution mm -hmm. to get more knowledge education. and at least education and skills. Yeah. So I was really hustling hard then to join college, mm -hmm. which uh, I ended up having to even like facilitate myself yeah. and making sure that my younger sisters and brothers are also in school <laughs> and now before we also go to where how you met you guys i would love to know brian living in kisi how was it dating kenyan girls <laughs> before meeting serena <laughs> you know it was it was tough to to identify the true Objective, because the objective of the girl, mm -hmm. just like it is tough to find the true objective of a potential friend in Kenya, because many people act like they want to be my friend or at the time girlfriend, but what they really want yeah, was money. Okay. Uh -huh. So and they they know how to they know how to fake it. Uh -huh. So I got fooled. Uh -huh. I've been fooled plenty of times by people who I trusted, who I thought were my friends. Uh -huh. And then all they really wanted was was money. And once they got that, mm -hmm. once they benefited from our what I thought was a friendship, they disappeared. Okay, so it was hard for you dating here in Kenya. Not hard, but there was a different aspect. There was a, there was an additional aspect. Yeah. To try and filter out people who were not mm. were not in it for the right reasons. Yeah, sure. And Serena, were you dating before meeting Brian? <laughs> she was dating a very famous music artist. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Tell us. <laughs> Maybe we'll watch this. Okay. Was it? Was his name? <laughs> Mister. There's a whole song about her. He's in the music video. Mm. Oh my what, God. What's his name? <laughs> Mister. Kwambi. Nkapa datu. Chijal. Mister something. Yeah. At the time I met, of course. Before meeting Brian. Before meeting Brian, I I was in 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 relationships as well mm -hmm. i have i'm i had a maasai ex-boyfriend mm -hmm. and then but when i met brian mm -hmm. i was still single i oh, was single so at that time okay so you broke up you guys we broke up okay yeah yeah <laughs> that's why i was i was available for brian okay <laughs> but yeah at that time i was really like um so much into community work yeah. i had even relocated to the village mm -hmm. so you know, sometimes, my, most of the time in my community, they will they will always like point fingers at us, and they were like, mm. "These girls, we educate them, mm. and then they are married outside." Mm. And then I was even daring them. I'm like, "I'm going to be single intentionally yeah. to see if really these guys mm. like they are serious about marrying the local mm. women." Mm -hmm. And then Brian happened. <laughs> <laughs> He was he was the lucky one. Okay. Yeah. And growing up, did you ever see yourself like dating a Mzungu or a white guy? Uh huh. Funny enough, um, I think the fact that I went to school like for me, school changed Your so many things for me, even like my yeah. perspective. Mm -hmm. And so I remember when we were when we w every time we would have a conversation with my late mom about FGM, I would always tell them that, like, you know, if you are only having me go through FGM so that I can be, I could get a Maasai husband, 
you don't have to worry about that because now I can be married by any race. Mm -hmm. But really, like, I, I, I never saw any limits for me. I knew anything could be possible just because of education okay. for me. Yeah. So for me, let's say, for example, if I want to get married to a Maasai man, I have to go through the FGM? It depends. Actually, it's a very, yeah, it's, it's quite an, an unfortunate scenario usually because I think it, it all depends first where you live. Ooh. So if you live in a very, very rural village, yeah. like the pressure could be a lot because sometimes maybe I have a friend who was actually, who went through the cut while giving birth. So sometimes mm. you, you're trying to give birth, mm -hmm. you're not cut, yeah. and of course there is all this misconceptions and myths yeah. around FGM yeah. and women who are not cut yeah. so they might actually not help you deliver the midwife until you've gone through the cut wow. so they might have you go through the cut first before they deliver you but now part of my work has been to sensitize yeah. these women and we have even the cutters because mostly the women who perform FGM they're the midwives okay. and we've been really um, sensitizing them, even some of them, we are trying to get them alternative sources of income mm. so that we stop cutting girls. Wow. Yeah. So what's the benefit of cutting girls according to them and according to traditions? Is there really any benefit? I don't think there is. I always ask them, mm -hmm. but it's all in the mind. Like it's all the, 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 all the, all the wrong reasons that mm -hmm. have been passed on from mm -hmm. generation to generation. Mm -hmm. But I have I haven't had any valid reason any that I can reason. tell you yeah. the reason. Of course, most of them they do because of the belonging and the acceptance. Okay. Not even the girls. Mm -hmm. First of all, the parents. Yeah. The parents they want to like fit into the society. That was like now before it was yeah. illegalized. Yeah. And then also girls actually peer pressure is real. Mm. Some girls. Mm will bully others if they haven't gone through it or they will isolate them so the girls can actually also like insist to go through the cut mm. which is the parents happiness wow. and then uh, of course maybe for marriageability maybe they, they think that they can't get someone to marry which is now why it's, it's important to bring men in the topic yeah. we have i have awesome friends men and fgm and they are all like driving the change and they are all part of the fight to end FGM. Wow. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. Where Thank was you. <laughs> Brian, did you growing up did you ever see yourself dating a black woman or marrying a black woman? Uh, <laughs> I didn't think about race like that. Mm -hmm. To be honest. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who I'd end up with but or married but I never I never thought that it had to be one race or it never depended on the race or anything like that so mm. it never crossed my mind yes or no it just wasn't a okay. wasn't a thought okay yeah <laughs> amazing yeah so tell us how you met Brian that's really <laughs> <laughs> so when I was in Ariri with my organization Arrive Kenya, mm -hmm. my first ever friend in, in Kenya, his name is Lenny from Awasto Kedon, one of my best friends in Kenya, my first ever friend in Kenya, and we're still friends to, to this day. Mm -hmm. Shout out to him. Shout out to Lenny. <laughs> um, Lenny. <laughs> uh, he's also our safari guide at Bomanoma. Mm -hmm. He had uh, a friend of his, a girl who was in university mm -hmm. and she was studying gender studies and she needed an internship. So she, Lenny connected her to my organization and asked if she could do her internship with us. And we accepted and she became the girls dormitory manager slash guidance counselor mm -hmm. at our organization for the girls that we had. Mm -hmm. And she was friends with Selena. So Which university were you studying? She was studying in Nakuru. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she was the one who introduced me to Selena. Uh -huh. And then we were texting for a while. And then we met. And then that's it. Now it was in 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. How did you meet? Like, I want to see that scenario of you meeting. The first time we ever met in person mm -hmm. was in Narok. Town? Town. Mm hmm. 
And the next day, she took me to her village mm -hmm. for our first real date. Mm -hmm. And that night, in the middle of nowhere, in her village, with no light pollution, there was an incredible meteor shower. And we just sat outside. My cousin was there, and she was there, and I was there. Mm -hmm. And we just watched the, the stars and the, and the meteors. Every 20, 30 seconds, you could see a comet fly by. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was magical. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we spent more time together, went on trips together, mm -hmm. and, you know, whether it was in Kenya, Diani Beach, mm -hmm. or other places, Mount mm -hmm. Forest, and then went to Cape Town. Mm -hmm. In South Africa, what? The work. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> We're going, you know, progressively. Mm -hmm. So first Cape Town, and then, um, as Selena has said, mm -hmm. we ended up walking across East Africa. Before we go mm. to you starting walking, mm -hmm. what attracted you to her physically for the first time meeting her? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mataco. <laughs> what is Mataco? <laughs> Uzo? <laughs> Matidi? I mean, maybe Uzo physically what attracted me, so... <laughs> so, when I talk, I need to wake up this. Ah, babe. What attracted you? She's beautiful. Yeah. Hey. She's beautiful, and she's got a very kind soul and a good heart, so I wanted to get yeah. to know her more, and we, mm -hmm. we fell in love. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Selena, what attracted you to him? He's handsome. Mm. And yeah, I think we vibed a lot. Uh -huh. He's also very kind. And so I was like interested to know more about him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is now 2018. 2018. How was it dating for you? Like, how is it dating a black woman? Mm. Especially in the village. You keep saying black, but I'm going to push back. We are black, you white. I'm going to push back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The culture difference is much greater than the skin color difference. Mm -hmm. The skin color difference, there's no difference between a black oh, person, a white person, a Kenyan girl. Because, yeah. Sorry. because I mean, mm -hmm. if you think about it, mm -hmm. I could have been an African-American, yeah. grown up in America, yeah. in the same place I grew up, yeah. dating Selena. I would have had almost yeah. the same experience as I do as a white person, yeah. not because of skin color, yeah. but because of the culture that I was grown up in, mm -hmm. the culture that she comes from. Yeah. So it has nothing to do with skin color, but more about cultural differences. Sure, uh, yeah. So even to this day, it's it's compromises mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. There's cultural differences that sometimes I don't I don't prefer from her culture, and I'm sure there's cultural things from my culture that she doesn't prefer. But we try and make compromises and and go with the flow a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like which culture? The Maasai culture. Mm -hmm. How is it? Well, there's definitely good things and bad things about it. Mm -hmm. I think any culture has good yeah. things and bad things. I'm not one to to identify 100% with any culture, whether it's a religion yeah. or a tribe or a race or anything like that, because I think there's good things or bad things. And mm. one of the things that we've tried to do is take the best things from her culture and the best things from my culture and, and, and build a little paradise called Bomonoma while... Mm -hmm. while not incorporating the, the negative aspects of, of each specific okay. culture. Okay. And you, Serena, how is it dating uh, an American guy? <laughs> she has to keep time. Very hard. Have to, oh my. Very hard for her. I'm always on Mzungu time, Western time. No, you're I have not. To keep time. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. I'm always running <laughs> because I have to keep time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been amazing just learning, like, especially like visiting his country. Mm -hmm. And seeing it was like culture shock for me. Mm -hmm. Meeting his amazing family, but also as as he said, it's about just like uh, taking out the positive aspects from both of our cultures mm -hmm. and experiences, mm -hmm. and just building something amazing. Because at the end of the day, it's hard to change people. Like I'm trying my best, but I will always be like ten minutes late sometimes, mm -hmm. most of the time. I'm lucky. I'm, time. I'm lucky if she's ten minutes late. <laughs> I consider that on time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's just about like mm -hmm. compromises, understanding, mm -hmm. patience, mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. I mean, it all comes down to um, communication. Yeah. And one thing that we have that many, I think, cross-cultural couples might not have yeah. is communication uh, in two languages because she's fluent in English and Kiswahili and Maasai, and I'm fluent in English and, and Kiswahili. Also so, Kiswahili? 
Okay, usiulize swali ni unajua jibu. <laughs> so, <laughs> kwa sababu najua Kiswahili na pia najua Kiswahili na pia najua Kiingereza na najua Kiingereza, yeah. hatuwezi jipata mahali ambayo hatuelewani kwa sababu kama tunaongea Kiswahili na hatuelewani, tunabadilisha kwa kwa Kiingereza. <laughs> na pia kama tunaongea Kiingereza na hatuelewani, tunaongea kwa kwa Kiswahili. Hiyo okay. communication ni lazima. <laughs> na unaweza pata watu wengine cross cultural couples mmoja anaongea Kiingereza mwingine na hata hata anajua tu Kiingereza hiyo hiyo ya kijiji hiyo ushago kabisa anajua tu kadogo alafu huyu mwenye anajua Kiingereza vizuri huyu mzungu ajui aja 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 take time kujua lugha ya mama yake ya bwana yake ya, ya bibi yake alafu hata hawelewani kabisa alafu haongee sasa sasa unaweza unaendelaje hivyo bila bila kuongeana how long did you take for you to learn I, I I took two years. I yeah, one year studying, mm-hmm. and one year the first year I lived in Kisi, mm-hmm. uh, being completely culturally immersed, living or uh, working with street kids. Mm-hmm. They know their mother tongue. Mm-hmm. They know Swahili, but many of them did not go to school, so they did not know English. So my option was either learn Swahili mm-hmm. or basically don't talk to anyone mm-hmm. and have no friends. Mm-hmm. So I chose to learn Swahili. Learn Swahili. Yeah. It took uh, one year for me to be semi fluent, and then after another year so now two years mm-hmm. i was able to speak without having to translate in my head you know first mm-hmm. i would have to think in english and then translate it into swahili and then speak swahili now mm-hmm. i just speak swahili mm-hmm. from my brain there's no translating there's no anything it's just it's so fluent in uh, we, i mean we live in kenya i've never kenya. Under, i've never understood people i mean i mean languages is huge it would have been so much harder if i couldn't communicate with her in swahili or with her parents in swahili or with local people in swahili mm-hmm. we're in kenya and me learning swahili is a is a sign to the local people here that i'm willing to to uh, immerse myself in their culture mm-hmm. i've never understood people who might move to a foreign country and make zero effort to learn the local mm-hmm. language because that's the the easiest first step someone can make to show yeah. uh, the community that they're they're willing to put themselves out there mm-hmm. and of course it has tangible benefits mm-hmm. in terms of communication and and mm-hmm. relationship and and i mean even building mm-hmm. i've built a lot of things in kenya including Bomonoma and it would not have turned out like this because all the workers who built and all the people we hired who built and all the um the the specialists and the experts who built the top <laughs> buildings and and everything they're all kenyan yeah and my swahili was better than their english so if we tried to just understand each other in english it would not have turned out how beautiful as it is now yeah how was your dating life in where 2018 like when you started now dating i was single mm-hmm. i was single mm-hmm. and Yeah, I was single. Yeah. That was it. Single and ready to mingle. Mm-hmm. And then I met Selena and then uh, met then I wasn't single anymore, yeah. And that was life of dating Serena. It was good. Yeah. It was good. Um we got to know each other. Yeah. And I'm going to jump ahead to the walk a little bit, but we did walk across uh, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda. Yeah, exactly. And you you never know someone better mm-hmm. than when um you've walked 20 kilometers you have 20 kilometers to go it's Mm -hmm. hot out the sun is out you're carrying a heavy backpack you're dehydrated you're hungry Mm -hmm. you feel like quitting that is when you get to really know someone Mm -hmm. in those conditions Mm -hmm. and we did that and then after that Mm -hmm. i kind of knew she was the one yeah Yeah. so we'll do a separate video of your walking journey guys i understand you you walked across east africa yes we did so eager to get inspired with your story yes we did first let's finish the love story so did you well that's part of the love story that is instead yeah it's part of the love story okay i mean what what more romantic thing than (laughs) two people getting to know each other walking across east africa yeah Yeah. but you would love to 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 do it like a separate video so that we discuss the what inspired you motivation challenges maybe for people who would be inspired to do the same journey what the advice you would give but now did you propose i did propose Mm -hmm. how was it she said yes mm-hmm. and so it was successful we proposed yeah. up there on our tower uh-huh. up there that's where, you propose. That's where i proposed uh-huh. mm-hmm. 20 20 20 2021 2021 2020 2020 2020 during covid during covid uh-huh. 2020 were you excited selena i was very excited <laughs> <laughs> so you did it for two years mm. then you proposed 
2018, 2019, 2020, 2000, yeah, three years. Mm -hmm. Two, three years. Mm -hmm. And I proposed and got married in 2021. 2021. Where? In Kenya. In Kenya. Mm -hmm. And had our first baby in later 2021. How did you propose? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, Brian, Brian never says we need to talk. Yes. And so he was like, I want us to talk. Let's go up there. I yeah. want us to talk. I never say we need to talk. You said, like, I always say we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> don't interrupt. Uh -huh, don't so, oh. when he said okay, we okay. need to talk, I was like, well, is everything okay? okay? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Mm -hmm. So, it turns out that he had spoken with our friends who were staying here mm -hmm. and told them about it. So, they were just up this balcony mm -hmm. waiting to take the, the, the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, t I don't know where he got a Maasai beaded ring. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. And then he put in his earphones case uh -huh. so you wouldn't even know that he was carrying it, it. Was <laughs> and then he was carrying it and i'm like wait what it's morning okay it's not that he never says we talk but it's in the morning he wants us to go up there and i'm like what's going on so we went up there and then i'm just there i was on on sweatpants and <laughs> and a jumper and he goes down on his knee and open and was like <laughs> What, did so you say, Brian? <laughs> what anybody would say, will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was so surprised. Uh -huh. And and even like he put. He were you surprised? Me, say, like, say, speak honestly. Say yes, mm. yes. Speak honestly. Were you actually surprised? You kind of knew it was coming. You knew? I mean. I really. Like. I, I don't think she I was that surprised. I guess, but I wasn't. I wasn't expecting it that day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, of course, it was a yes. Mm -hmm. And I knew that now it's forever for forever us. For and uh, yeah, and then, and then now seeing the pictures, they were so cute yeah. too. <laughs> they, really, they really captured the moment mm -hmm. well. So that was the beginning of our marriage. Wow. Yeah. And talk about your wedding, how was it? Our wedding was very, very low key. We decided mm -hmm. because it was in the middle of COVID. Mm -hmm. My family wouldn't have been able to come. Yeah. Uh, places were shut down, yeah. so we actually got married at the government office, um, Sharia no, Shari Shari House, Sharia House. House in Nairobi, in Nairobi yep. uh -huh. uh, with a government official there mm -hmm. and some a few guests, but not many. Mm -hmm. And uh, we came back here and threw a party for people. Yeah. But we always thought that one day, once COVID is over and once we're a little bit more established, we'll do a, we'll do a, a real wedding, a big wedding party. Yeah. Once uh, my family can, can all come over and, mm. right. and be a part of it and yeah. participate. Okay. And in Kenya, Kenyan men pay dowry to, to, to Kenyan, they are Kenyan wives. Did you pay dowry to your girl? I'll let her answer that. Mm -hmm. Serena, did, you, you did he pay your dowry? Did I pay? Uh -huh. <laughs> I think did, I did. He did oh, pay. In not, a, in not the most traditional way, mm -hmm. but in other ways. Okay. Um, yeah, so. Supporting people, paying for certain things, mm -hmm. building certain things. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a certain amount of cows per se, mm -hmm. but it was a level, a level of support and and financial support and, a, and emotional support. But I mean, okay. a dowry is usually financial mm -hmm. that I that I paid uh, willingly to help Selena's parents and family. Mm -hmm. okay. But it wasn't the traditional yeah. cows and blankets. It was it was a a different type of dowry yeah so but i think okay. wait, when we do the wedding mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. i think now it will be now if we start from step one traditionally because mm -hmm. it's going to be a traditional wedding of course as, like, see you now mombe yeah yeah oh okay i didn't i didn't mean i didn't mean on the record, you may shalipa. You may let go. You may shalipa. Kitambo zana. But you know, in Kenya, you 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 don't finish paying dowry. Kwa ni una 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 pata commission ya dowry yake. Una vigiri ada. Ada ni kimli una vigiri uta faidika. It's just um. Mhm. Mm Even in our community, our, our men don't finish paying dowry. You pay like forever. 
What do you think about that? That's ridiculous. Mm, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It's a culture difference. You know, yeah. you know, in our culture, uh -huh. the the bride's parents pay for the wedding. So if we want to have a cross cultural relationship, and I'm paying dowry as the mess I do, mm -hmm. then she gets to pay for the entire wedding, and her parents get to pay for the entire wedding oh. because that's what happens in my culture. So in your culture, the, girl pays the girls' the parents pay for the wedding. So it can't just be me who makes the compromises. Okay. It has to be a, a sacrifice from both yeah, both, both parties and a look at both cultures. It's not just yeah. it's just not one that's compromising to the other's culture. It's mutual. So you guys, you had to overcome the culture differences. I feel it. Well, we're still overcoming it. <laughs> those, those don't end. <laughs> dowry, dowry, <laughs> dowry ends. Cultural differences forever. Yeah, is forever. Really Cultural differences last way longer than dowry does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was the reaction from your friends and family? when they learned that you, you, you're dating and marrying a Kenyan woman? Oh, very positive. Mm -hmm. From my parents, to my family, to my friends. Mm -hmm. ex extremely positive. Mm -hmm. No one had anything bad to say. Not even one. Okay. And so at, least, at least to my face, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Me too, yeah. Uh, so I, yeah, I've met a lot of brands. Okay, brands. Family, friends. Mm -hmm. And they're also amazing. Mm -hmm. And they welcomed me with two hands. Mm -hmm. And also my, of course, my family also. You are supportive. They, they welcome Brian and they love him. You know, some I get married at like 12 or 13 years old. She was, what, 26, 27 when she got married? I think they were just happy she found someone. <laughs> at that point, she, they didn't care who it was. They were just said, finally. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Been an amazing one. Um, do we go for honeymoon? No. Um, again, at the time, it was COVID was happening. We were in the middle of building an eco lodge, an organic farm. She was pregnant. So, it, you know, we decided during that whole time, yeah, marriage was important. We wanted to get married, but also we were very busy here yeah. during that time of COVID. It wasn't just us sitting around thinking we were going to go on a honeymoon. It was, yeah. it was us building an, an eco lodge yeah. before we got here. There was nothing here. Yeah. Three years ago, there was not a single building that you see now that was here. Mm. Uh, there, there was no farm. There was no fence. There was no, it was just an open field. There was no trees. Mm. So if you think about all that work, yeah, and in the middle of that was our, our marriage and our wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, it was our marriage and then our, our small party here with friends and some family. And then the next day, back, back to work. Yeah. Back to work. <laughs> okay, how many kids do you have? You have plans to add more? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Serena, do you have plans to add more? Yeah. <laughs> Talk to the camera. <laughs> you have plans? One more. One more. <laughs> sometimes she says one more, sometimes she says five more. It depends on the time yeah. of day, it depends on the day. And you I will just go with the flow. Um, I always thought in my mind that three was a good number. Mm -hmm. But after having one who's almost two years old now uh -huh. maybe two is a good number yeah mm -hmm. so but but at least two at least two i think having uh, our our baby our daughter's name is zuri mm -hmm. and again she's this month she turns two years old yeah. i think her having a sibling in her life is a very positive thing it's something that i grew up with having a a, a brother it's something that she grew up with having siblings and the relationship between siblings is very important yeah. and i i wouldn't want to have a uh, a child who would not have a, that sibling relationship. Yeah. And since coming to Kenya in 2013, have you been back? Mm -hmm. So when I had my nonprofit organization, I still do, but when I was more, um, when more of my time was there and, and focused on fundraising, mm -hmm. I would go back about to America for about three months every year. Okay. Usually in October, November, December. Mm -hmm during the the fall season going into winter i'd do fundraising i would give speeches i would talk to rotary clubs i would give presentations at the library you know all these different things but since we came back to kenya in 2019 december 2019 we have not been, i have not been back to america she has not been back to america oh she, you've taken her to america yeah we went to america together in 2019 2019 mm -hmm. so let's come back to serena how was it going to america for the first time you know <laughs> you from kenya <laughs> what were your expectations oh my gosh it's so developed <laughs> real culture shock <clears throat> I always say like the roads are under construction even though they are perfect mm -hmm. <laughs> according to me. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But we've gone to Cape Town. We've gone to Cape Town before that and Cape Town mm -hmm. 
is extremely developed. She had gone to where? Germany? Mm -hmm. Had you gone to the UK before that? Mm -hmm. Germany. Okay, Germany, yeah. So she had been to but Europe, she had been to Cape Town, you'd been to where in... Uh -huh. I think the highlight of my trip to the US was really meeting Brian's husband. Mm -hmm. Brian. Brian, my husband? <laughs> family, yes. Who is my husband? Parents <laughs> and family. It's okay. <laughs> the, the highlight was meeting Brian's parents and friends. <clears throat> I attended a... Uh, a wedding too, which was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think the first Western wedding I've been to. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it was really amazing. Also seeing the US because mm -hmm. I have only heard of it before. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to also go to a number of states mm -hmm. which in states? the US. Mm -hmm. The wedding was in Chicago. Chicago. Yes. And then we went to Colorado. Yeah. I went to Brandt University. Yes. University of See you know, see you Boulder. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I even like we talked to a class. Yeah. And I met I met his professors. Mm -hmm. I also one of my friends also flew me out to Texas where she lives and her fiance then. Now they are married. Mm -hmm. So I was also able to visit some friends there. We also went to Utah, and you went to, to uh, uh, Washington DC, we were in Martha's Vineyard in Cape Cod, we were in Boston, we were in uh, Oh yeah, I, I mean a lot of stuff, four months. Oh, yeah, we I were loved it. It, was, <laughs> it was so fun. And then it was it was summer mm -hmm. into the autumn. Mm -hmm. So I was able to see the leaves changing mm -hmm. colours. Yes. It was so beautiful. So okay. yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed my US trip a lot and I'm looking forward to go back. Yeah. Okay. We're going back in October. And what shocked you? What shocked me was um like people are so busy mm -hmm. <coughs> and then like see here in Bomanoma. I, sometimes I wake up and there is like five women waiting to speak to me, to mm -hmm. say hi. Like, I think the social life is yeah. quite different because mm -hmm. you wouldn't always have people like coming to knock uh, and like maybe check on you or, 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 or give or take stuff. Mm -hmm. People are busy, like people are working and you have to set dates to meet people. Wow. Like you have to prepare for meetings, mm -hmm. which doesn't happen in my culture. You feel like you want to see someone, you just walk to their home. <laughs> so would you say US, it, it's lonely? I, w I would just say there is, I think, because I also talk to, I talk to people, mm -hmm. not just the US, mm -hmm. but the people I've talked to from US, Europe, mm -hmm. they really talk about social isolation, mm -hmm. because you know, everyone is busy chasing their dreams, doing what they like, mm -hmm. and you know, I don't think they have big families okay. so i think the parents li really empower their children yeah. and then they get their wings to fly mm -hmm. and then they end up like finding themselves in other cities other states and they only get to see them a few times a year maybe mm. which it happens here too but i feel like having big families and extended families here it makes that social life like look the way it looks like yeah. and also i think uh yeah that also even like how everything works there it's quite different from here mm -hmm. yeah how was food oh food i love the blt bacon lettuce <laughs> and tomato yeah blt sal salad i mean she assimilated quite quickly on day two she was going into starbucks asking for a, yeah. a caramel macchiato, a macchiato <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a blt and a croissant and spice latte. yeah she had no <laughs> She had no, she had no problem <laughs> immersing yeah. herself in American culture very quickly. I adapted, I adapted instantly. Mm -hmm. I could wear like whatever dress I want. Mm -hmm. So here in Kenya, you wear short clothes and no, oh. you can't even walk on the street yeah. with people like shouting at you. Mm -hmm. And we've had instances where women have been harassed yeah. because of the dress code, mm -hmm. which I highly like. Uh, I, I, I don't support. Yeah. So there, I saw people are more free. You could dress whatever you want. You could just do whatever you you want when it comes to your own like dress code. Mm -hmm. So I had no problem wearing shorts. Mm -hmm. In my village, you can't wear shorts yeah. or tight tight jeans because that's how it is. It's the culture. It's disrespectful. Yeah. So, but in the U.S., I had that Chunk. freedom. <laughs> yeah. I have experienced like racism. You know, this one is to inspire people who want to marry, like, interculturally. Sometimes people are scared, oh my god. Others are like, I have watched your video and I like it and I'm going for it. 
if they have made it, I can also do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it comes down to communication. Hmm? It comes down to communication. Yeah. And compromise. So, but you know, you, you learn from others. So people watch our videos and they get inspired. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope somebody, one of you gets inspired because Miss Rachel is single and, uh, <laughs> you know. Ready to mingle? No, I'm not ready. ready to mingle. I am not ready. I'm like a <laughs> I am. So, mm -hmm. personally, I haven't, I, I didn't, I didn't, in, on, on my trip to the U.S., mm -hmm. and I can say to other parts, mm -hmm. yes, I haven't experienced any bullying, yeah. but... I think in Germany, mm -hmm. people were really looking at me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because I was dressed in my house or something, but yeah, I noticed that people were looking at me mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, I haven't experienced any bully or discrimination. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Brian, I have a question. Why live in Kenya with your wife and not move to America? First, I'll say mm -hmm. that we might move to America. Mm -hmm. Just because we're in Kenya right now doesn't mean we're going to be in Kenya for the rest of our lives. Okay. You've found us when we are in Kenya, but that doesn't mean that it's a permanent mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Number two is that, look around, we've built ourselves a, a mini paradise. Yeah. These days, the way the world is, I think people understand that if you have Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. you can do a lot more than you could have in the past mm -hmm. and because we're totally off-grid and powered by solar mm -hmm. connected to high-speed Wi-Fi that is reliable mm -hmm. and consistent I can go into our office and work on our laptop as can she as can you yeah. and there's not as big a difference uh, as there used to be between a small office in rural Kenya like we have here mm -hmm. and uh, an office in New York City mm -hmm. because we're we're connected through the internet so I think location we're able to choose a place that that fits our lifestyle yeah. and we we're both health minded we both like to exercise we like we like to be outside yeah. and this area of Kenya and and we've chosen to settle down for now meets those those requirements mm -hmm. plans to ever move back to live in America maybe in the future I love America mm -hmm. I was born in America raised in America America is an amazing country mm -hmm. an amazing continent of North America, um, the mountains and the, I mean, just everything about it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. She also, I'm speaking for her, but I think loved being in America. Mm -hmm. And America and Kenya complement each other in, in very many positive ways. Yeah. So if I could choose the life uh, going forward, I would say we would split time between America and Kenya. I'm not saying that it would be 50-50, mm -hmm. but it could be 70-30, it could be 80-20, it could be 60-40, who knows. Yeah. Uh, but, but, I think that both of the lifestyles complement each other and living in America has its benefits, but also living in Kenya has its, okay. its benefits too. Okay. And how is mileage now? Since you've got money. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Mm -hmm. I don't think much has changed. Yeah. It's still the man I chose. Mm -hmm. And we, we have an addition, our beautiful young girl. Mm -hmm. She keeps us uh, occupied mm -hmm. most of the time, mm -hmm. and I still get to do what I love. Mm -hmm. He supports me a lot, yeah. and yeah, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> enjoying life. Yeah. Have you taken your daughter to America? Not yet. Plan? We will take. Uh, she will go the first time in October. Okay. In less yeah. than one month, she'll be in America. Oh, amazing! And what advice do you have for? couple who are married in your like international marriage let's say intercultural yeah intercultural couples i would say communication yeah just like any other marriage mm -hmm. communication Indeed. and it's it's even more important when you have two different cultures because you're going to have instances when when, when <coughs> things don't make sense to one person but are very clear to the other person and I can't read her mind, she can't read my mind, I shouldn't think that she knows what I want, she shouldn't think that she, she shouldn't think that I knows what I should know what she wants, which means communication, mm -hmm. which means language. There can be no language barrier. Yeah, I would also insist on communication, of course, mm -hmm. and also like just taking time to know each other, mm -hmm. don't be in any rush, mm -hmm. and 
be patient with each other. Mm -hmm. And I think love makes it all better. Okay. Yeah. And to finalize, Brian, talk to Serena, give us some sweet message or words that you've never told her. I love you, and I think our marriage can get better over time. Aww. People sometimes think marriages go worse over time, but I think that marriages can also get better over time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> that was an awkward case because you asked. I know. <laughs> you could do that naturally. Mm. Yeah. So if, if people Mira, want no. to find more of your story, where can they? Mira. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> um, Bomonoma.com mm -hmm. is the online home of our Ecolodge, but also has information about us and links to our respective nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. It has a story about how we started, it has contact information. Mm -hmm. Basically, everything leads you back to www.bomanoma.com. B O M A N O M A, which I'm sure will be linked in the video description below. Yep.